I'm Ryan Lightfoot-Brown of Chelsea Financial Services. We're joined today by Graham McGraw of the SLI Global Smaller Companies Fund. Thank you for joining us. Now, in the Global Smaller Companies Fund, you've got a 6,000 company opportunity set. How do you filter down through that um, and the tools that you use in there? Yeah, so it's a, it's a vast opportunity set. And the, the first part of our process, um, a big part of that is a tool that we call The Matrix. Mm -hmm. So this was a quant tool that was developed um, at Standard Life back in the, the late 1990s. Um, and it's been fairly consistent over that period. And what The Matrix does um, is it assesses an investment universe. So um, in this case, over 6,000 stocks on 13 individual factors. Now, these factors have been back-tested and have been proven in conjunction to be predictive of share price outperformance. So each of those 6,000 stocks um, has what we call a total score, which is a combination of these 13 factors. And these factors are grouped into four broad categories, quality, growth, momentum, and valuation. And very simply, we are looking to carry out fundamental analysis on companies that have high total scores. Mm -hmm. Because from a quant perspective, these companies look attractive to us. But it's at that point the team um, do the fundamental analysis and try and work out um, if the matrix is giving a true signal. Is this a type of quality type of company we're looking for? Or is the matrix giving a false signal? Um, so most of the companies in that universe, uh, 6,000 stocks, um, we would typically look at the top quintile mm -hmm. um, and would screen out the very liquid stocks. So that takes us down to around 800. Um, but most stocks at that stage would, would get disregarded for being too cyclical mm -hmm. um, or too risky for a process. We're looking for the lower risk, highest quality companies. And whereabouts are you finding the opportunities at the moment? Yeah, so again, with, with that huge opportunity set, there's, there's opportunities all over the world, as you might imagine. Um, we are very much bottom-up stock pickers. Um, but from time to time, certain themes arise in the portfolio. Um, and a couple of themes we're seeing at the moment is um, food and drink. Um, so people think um, food and drink with an equity, usually slow growth, uh, mega cap, potential bond proxy companies. But in the small cap space, um, it's quite a different story. There's a lot of um, smaller, innovative companies really driving change within this industry. Um, Fever Trees, obviously well known to um, many, many clients in the UK. Uh, but we have a number of other names globally that also fit into that broad theme. Um, so Grubhub is an interesting name. Um, so again, in the UK, we're probably all familiar with Just Eat, mm -hmm. uh, which is the leading um, mobile uh, takeaway ordering device. In the US, Grubhub is the market leader. Um, and just thinking, how do we come up with Grubhub? Matrix identified it as an interesting company. We'd never heard of this company. That prompted the team to go and carry out fundamental analysis. And what they found was that Grubhub um, was the clear market leader um, in this growing segment um, of of ordering food online in the US. Um, so the, the best platform, uh, the biggest market share, uh, the best management team, strong balance sheet. And they're really benefiting from that shift um, from ordering takeaways over the phone to doing it through a, a mobile app. Mm. And as you might expect in the US, it's a much bigger opportunity set um, than you might find in the UK. Mm. So Grubhub last year um, executed on average 300 orders per minute and have 80,000 restaurants under coverage. So it's a huge, um, huge market that Grubhub are the, the market leader in. Um, another name um, that fits into that um, kind of food theme is uh, Vasanen. This is a Dutch listed um, company um, that switched their almost whole production to natural organic foods. Um, and again, we're not thematic investors, but this is a high quality company um, in a segment that, that we think is a structural growth mm. area. And then the second theme, again, as a result of our bottom-up process, is automation. Hmm. Now, automation is certainly not a new theme. It's been going on for, for many years now. But again, smaller companies are at the forefront of innovation within this. Um, so Cognex is a holding we've had for a few years now. So they're the market leader in machine vision cameras. Um, so these cameras sit, um, sit in these warehouses, so an Apple warehouse, for example, um, and assess if the if the device has been put together correctly and scan barcodes. So as we want things as consumers faster, quicker, um, automation is increasing in, in importance in everyday life and companies the likes of Cognex are really benefiting from that trend. Now, quite interestingly, in your portfolio, you've actually got emerging markets. Um, can you tell us about where you're finding opportunities and what sort of stocks you're finding? Yeah, so this is a truly global fund. So we include, um, it's the old country world benchmark. So that includes, um, I think it's around 1,200 stocks from emerging markets. And again, the matrix is key here. It points us in the direction of um, where interest and change is happening in these companies. Um, so within emerging markets, um, currently, uh, we've got quite a lot of exciting names in China. Mm -hmm. um, so we have um, a company called 51 Job. So they are the leading um, online recruitment um, company within China. 
um, and they are really benefiting from that shift within China, um, growing workforce, um, and also moving into um, higher margin parts of the market, such as payroll um, and training. That's really interesting, Graham. Thank you very much for coming in. For more information on Graham's funds, please visit chelseafs.co.uk.